a presentation of HBO Sports. Superfly, the sequel. Last September, a packed card of 115-pound fights delivered on its promise of relentless action. This is unbelievable phone booth warfare right now. And a new ruler was established in the Superflyweight division. Down goes Chocolatito on a colossal right hook by Srisa Ketsorung Visai. This time, Srisa Ketsorung Visai left no questions unanswered. Down he goes a second time, and this is it. This is over. But there was also another emergence that night, as tough Mexican Juan Francisco Estrada upset a game Carlos Cuadras. Down goes Cuadras on a straight right hand by Estrada. It all set the stage for tonight. A pairing of those winners, the champion Sorung Visai against the challenger Estrada. Plus, with the 115-pound division as red hot as ever, the colorful Mexican Cuadras gets a chance at redemption against former Puerto Rican Olympian McWilliams Arroyo. And before that, a move to 112 pounds for a flyweight showdown between Filipino fighter Dani Nietes and Argentine Juan Carlos Rebeco. A sequel to one of the most memorable nights of the last year in boxing, Superfly Number 2, live from the Forum in Inglewood, California, next. After Dark is back, coming to you live from the Forum in Los Angeles. Tonight, it's part two of our heralded Superfly series with a triple header of exciting fights on tap in the 112 and 115 pound divisions. First, flyweight title holder Donnie Nietes takes on former title holder Juan Carlos Rebeco. Then we move up to Superflyweight for an intriguing matchup between entertaining Carlos Cuadras of Mexico and McWilliams Arroyo of Puerto Rico. And in our main event, Sri Saket Sorun Visai, coming off two upset wins over Chocolatito Gonzalez, faces Juan Francisco Estrada, who most recently defeated Carlos Cuadras in a hotly contested, razor thin decision. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this special edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing Superfly 2. And we're looking down the road toward our main event tonight, which brings together the two big winners from the first Superfly extravaganza, Juan Francisco Estrada, who got a comeback win over Carlos Cuadras to put him in position to challenge the world champion at 115 pounds. And that is Srisaket Sorung Visai, who climaxed that first Superfly with his dramatic knockout of Chocolatito Gonzalez. His second win over Gonzalez in calendar 2017. In the inter, or in the medium fight, the, the one that is the middle of the three tonight, you're going to be looking at Quadras, who fought against Estrada in that Superfly card last year and lost a very close decision. He believes that he's still in position to try to seek the division championship, and in order to solidify his position, he has to beat the man that he's facing tonight, which is McWilliams Arroyo of Puerto Rico. And we're ready now for the first fight of the evening, which takes place in the 112-pound weight class between Dani Nietes of the Philippines and Juan Carlos Rebeco of Argentina. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for these 212-pounders, and you'll see they're both veteran fighters. Nietes, age 35, one of only three Filipinos to have won world championships in three different divisions. And Rebeco, 34 years old, who has never won a world title, but is looking to get it done tonight. He gives up an inch in height at five feet 
feet two inches to five feet three. They're equal in arm length at 21 inches. The Ectus was four tenths of a pound under the 112 pound uh, limit for the division. And tonight they enter at just above 124 pounds apiece. I'll soon be joined at ringside by Max Kellerman and Andre Ward. Right now, let's throw to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world famous forum here in Englewood, California, serving the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, where tonight 360 Promotions is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment live on HBO. And it's all sponsored by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Chevez win the right way and the rematch. Triple G versus Canelo, live on HBO pay-per-view from T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. This contest brought to you in association with ALA Promotions and KO International. Whole bouts tonight sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman John Carvelli, Executive Officer Andy Foster. For tonight, the IBF, President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor Aaron Kaiser. The three judges scoring this contest, Max DeLuca, Alejandro Rochin, and Danny Sandoval. And in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Ed Hernandez Sr. And now, let's get this party started! 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF. Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and red. Officially weighing in at 112 pounds. His professional record, 39 victories, including 19 knockouts with three defeats. From Mendoza, Argentina, the challenger, former WBA flyweight world champion, Juan Carlos Cotonrejo. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing purple and officially weighing in at 111.6 pounds. He's a three-time world champion. His record, 40 victories, 22 wins by knockout, only one defeat with four draws. From Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, Philippines, the former mini world champion and the reigning and defending WBO flyweight Champion of the world, Danny Ahas Gentlemen, I've been over the rules with you both. You're both professionals. I expect you to conduct yourself as such. Both of your trunks are a little high. This is legal here. This is legal here. Touch gloves. Good luck. The Philippines have had a very proud tradition of producing great fighters throughout boxing history. And while Nietes has not been Manny Pacquiao, or Pancho Villa or Flash Alorde quite. He has forced himself onto that list among the great Filipino fighters of all time. Riveco is the kind of tough opponent that Nietes has beaten time and again throughout his championship run. And Andre uh, Nietes is a guy who has proven throughout his career that he can either box or punch. Uh, tonight, he probably is in the position of getting to choose what he wants to do. Rebecco, even though he's only giving one inch up in height, it's enough that he sees himself as the shorter fighter and understands he probably needs to get inside. Yeah, Rebecco obviously has been the shorter fighter for most of his career. He acknowledges that, but he's learned to overcome that. He's okay with that. And with Nietes, he's a veteran. He, on a scale from one to 10, He's going to give you a consistent five or six. He's not going to do anything that's going to wow you, but he does a lot of crafty, uh, subtle things in there that's definitely going to get your attention and get Rebecco's attention as well. And we begin with Nietes landing his jab 
And delivering one right hand across the top, fighting at a major pace. Nietes is reminds me of you in certain ways, Andre. His he's a disruptive fighter. He punches. His rhythm disrupts the other guy. He punches when the other guy doesn't want to engage. He disengages when the other guy wants to engage. That's the name of the game. He's very efficient, and he only does what he has to do. And so far, he has blocked every punch that Rebecco has tried. Blocking the body shots with his arms, blocking the upstairs stuff with his gloves. Rebecco, by my lights, hasn't really landed anything yet. CompuBox sees him at 1 for 11. Yet this will also quadruple and quintuple up on the jab at times. There's a lot of crafty things in there as the fight wears on. You can see that Rebecco is trying to get to the body with wide ringing shots. And chances are, when he lets his hands travel out to the side like that, wings those shots, that Yetis is going to see them coming and pick them off with his defensive skills. Yeah, Nietzsche is definitely going to discipline Rebecco every chance that he gets. And Rebecco knows that. He mentioned that to us in the fighter meeting about how he can't get too over anxious. He's a very aggressive fighter. He has a high punch count, but he knows that Nietzsche is a veteran. And he knows that Nietzsche is a natural counter puncher as well. Already we see Rebecco has thrown 21 punches to this point in the first round. In his last fight, he came out firing 70, 75, 80 punches per round, and he's already being limited to a considerably slower pace tonight by the tactical effectiveness of Donnie Nietis. Rebecco sneaks in a right hand to the body. Rebecco gets in another right hand to the body as Nietes misses with the right upstairs. Stop That's a really good Stop combination the to the body that Rebecco landed, especially the right hand. Quick, quick, ta, John. Quick, quick, ta. Jab, jab, jab. Kalite, kalite. Jab, kalit, jab, kalit. Huh? 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 Kalit kalit apa? Kalit kalit, ha? Kalit kalit ha? Ha? Ini jab ni, mu mu kau nak jenis apa? Mu tanah mu mu dol jenis apa? Ayo nak, ayo nak, ayo pukni. Atrasi, di dalam tanah mu atras ka? Atrasi ha? Atrasi je ja, ha? Atrasi, ha? Atras, human dan quick dan tranquilo. No le da distancia. Relax, don't give him range, okay? Come with me. Do very well, very well. Give me the towel. Want water? Not surprisingly, given his Filipino roots, Donny Nietes came to town early to prepare for this fight and get worked out bucket. at the wild Mano, card gym. But of course, Manny Pacquiao is not in the wild card gym these days. He's back in the Philippines practicing politics. Nietes said that he and his trainer, Edmund Villamore, uh, got in some good work at the wild card and got some effective advice and help from Freddie Roach, but not from the Filipino adjunct to that uh, wild card team, uh, Marvin Simodio. He also got some good rounds in with Brian Valori. Who, who fought suffered an upset loss on the undercard here tonight. But fought a great fight. It was a, it was a great fight. And Valoria suffered a bad, gruesome cut, I believe, in the 11th round. Uh, but the fight was pretty much decided at that point. The United States Olympian, brilliant prospect coming out, has had a bit of a hard luck career. Valoria has it had an excellent career. Um, and yeah, a bit of a hard luck one. A popular fighter when he turned pro, an Olympian. An offensive fighter, a crowd pleaser, a good personality, and wasn't didn't become a dominant champion, but would have been an excellent fighter as he has been in any era. Great, great person. See, there you see the subtlety of Nietes. Not a lot, not a lot of big movements, but just enough to slip. He looks at what he wants to punch, but he won't take the shot now 
he'll take it in the third or fourth round. That's a veteran tactic and a veteran move. Say, so great, Andre, that you cited the subtlety of it. I was just getting ready to say, look at the subtle head movement by Nietes, who doesn't have to do much to make Rebecca miss. And as you said that, he slipped the punch, he, he slipped and picked the punch with his left glove. He landed a jab right when Rebecca was trying to disengage. He's just a very crafty guy. These are the kinds of moves that don't necessarily catch the eye of that many people in the arena. But the opponent, when he watches Nietes do that, he's stuck with having to say to himself, you know, this guy's really good. Uh, I, I, I'm not able to do what I want to do. Jim, my predecessor in this seat, the great Larry Merchant, used to talk about a fighter in the pocket like this. This is called the pocket, where you're in punching range, like a great quarterback. The blitz is coming and things are flying all around and he calmly sidesteps and delivers the ball. And Yetez is like a really seasoned quarterback in the pocket. Look at that. Well chosen body shot by Nietes while Rebecca was missing upstairs. And now Rebecca comes back with a couple of body shots of his own. But in the closing seconds of round two, already by CompuBox count, Nietes is doubling Rebecco in landed punches. Donnie Nietes' ring nickname is ha -ha, the Tagalog word for snake, and it is perhaps as apt a moniker as there is anywhere in the sport of boxing. When I was 19 years old, my uncle told me there was a job waiting for me as the janitor at the Ala gym. A year after I got there, the owner bought some pet snakes, and I began taking care of them. I was definitely terrified of the snakes at first, but after a while I started to love them and I even wanted to have one as a pet. In those years of tending to the snakes, they bit me six or seven times, but it was okay because they were pythons and not poisonous. When you have a snake, people really look at you. I have two Burmese pythons of my own, but I couldn't bring them to the U.S. because they don't have visas. Dani okay. Nietes okay. okay. is so Good. emotionally controlled, so underexpressive, that that smile he broke out in the middle of talking about the that snakes represented hey. a major emotional display for him. That shows you that he loves the snakes. Uh, you know, I, I bring this metaphor up from time to time, or an analogy up, between boxing and chess. And the best chess books, I think, teach by showing you a master versus every different level of opponent, from beginner to expert. And the most interesting games are the master against the expert because you see the subtle differences. And in this fight so far, you've seen why Nietes has been a long reigning belt holder. Because in against an expert fighter, a world-class fighter, there's a subtle difference in terms of the depth of his skill, Andre. The way he picks punches, the calmness in the pocket, the countering, the pacing, he is, he's a master. He's a master, and you only get that through experience. Sometimes bad experiences and sometimes good experiences. And in Nietzsche's case, he's had a lot more good experiences than he's had bad. I mean, he's on a 14-year winning streak. Um, he's the longest reigning Filipino champion in boxing history. That's for a reason. One loss in his career, and it took place in September of 2004. Since then, all wins other than four different draws. And as much as um, flack as I give the sanctioning bodies, and they deserve it, the fact is, if you're a long reigning belt holder, that makes title def mandatory after mandatory, chances are you're gonna have an off night. Absolutely. Chances are against another world class opponent without a lot of fanfare, you can come in underprepared or you, you, you just didn't have it that night, and Nietes hasn't had that. He's been consistent every time, been able to overcome world-class opponents. Consistency in this game is definitely underrated. Sometimes we as boxing fans, we get excited. We get excited with the, you know, the shooting star, the guy that's making a big splash or you know, making a lot of noise in the moment, and that's fine. But show me the guy that has success against top competition over an extended period of time. That's the guy that gets me excited. Well, and that's, it was consistency over a long period of time. It was 46 consecutive wins with 38 knockouts that lifted Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez to the number one ranking pound for pound in the world 
coming into calendar 2017. But as his experiences with Suisse Kent's showroom beside show, there's somebody out there in this overwhelmingly vast and variety-filled world of boxing. There's somebody out there who has your number. And you just never know when you're going to run into that guy. Chocolatito Gonzalez could never have really known before he first fought Srisis at Soren Bisa that this was the guy. Particularly with pressure fighters in the lighter divisions, they tend to age very quickly once they hit about 30. Which makes it interesting to see what will happen to Srisa at Soren Bisa, who's 29. Tuesday, tune in for the next Real Sports. Look for an extended segment revisiting an undercover expose on the enslavement of child jockeys in Middle Eastern camel racing and the surprising events since, which have brought the practice to an end. You're giving him the range. You're giving him the range. All right. You gotta be closer to him. You gotta be close to him and work it. And go to the side and throw the shot. You're working that right. right. But be careful, all right? Be careful with his right. Have you felt his power? Nothing. Have you felt the right at all? No. Copy box numbers through the first three rounds tell a fascinating story. So far in the fight, Rebecca is landing. 13% of his total punches by CompuBox count. If you look at Nietzsche's his last three opponents combined, they landed 14.5% of their punches. So in other words, he's this good defensively against just about anybody he faces. And that means that he doesn't have to do all that much offensively to be the winner of most of his rounds. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Donnie Nietzsche. I, I gotta tell you, Jim, He's a very good fighter. I never saw him before, you know, live, but boy, I'll tell you, he's an excellent fighter. He punches real good in the middle of the ring. He keeps the fight where he wants it, you know. His ring generalship is excellent. And he outpunches Juan Carlos Rebeco in just about every round that I've watched so far in this fight. Uh, three to nothing, dining the at this. Max Kellerman compared him to Andre Ward. There can be fewer, higher compliments than that, but in a very, very few. In a very specific way. He doesn't remind me of Andre as an overall fighter, but in the sense that he dictates what's happening. He frustrates his opponent by doing what the opponent doesn't want to happen, by engaging and disengaging with a rhythm that upsets his opponent. In that respect, he's very much like Andre, I think. If you know anything about Riveco, like we mentioned earlier in the telecast, Riveco is a two-fisted fighter. He punches with volume, he throws a lot of punches, and he's aggressive. But you see Nietes, who's the consummate professional, he's the veteran. His nickname is Snake. He's almost like a snake charmer, where he's very deceptive. He's taken the punch count of Niet of, of Rebecca, excuse me, down, and Rebecca, in so many cases, is shell-shocked. He can't do what he wants to do, and I don't even think he realizes that right now. And yet Nietes is right in front of him, and he can't land the punches. And it also means that Nietes doesn't have to take any chances on offense to be offensively in control. He's landing 23% of his punches. That's not high, but it's enough to double what Rebecca is able to do. And a veteran like Nietes, you'll see him slowly start to pick it up. He'll throw just a little bit more each round until he gets the shots that he wants to get. And you'll look up and he'll either score a knockout or you'll look up and the fight will be over and he's won most of the rounds. That's how it goes. I, I don't know what the booing is about. I, I don't find this to be a, a boring fight. A little bit one-sided, obviously, but if you like boxing craft, you're seeing a lot of it here. And, and it's well, not of course, as he's not moving his hands. Hands and punches are flying. If the ticket buyers come from the boxing cultures that spawn the fighters on the card, Argentina, the Philippines, Mexico, uh, they expect to see aggressive fighters with an offensive bent. That's what they're used to. More risk taking. Exactly. Stop at the bell. Stop at the bell. That's probably the, the genesis of the booing that you're hearing here. This isn't their cup of tea. Well, they're acting as though this is stuff huh? ah. We're having a blast. Ah. Oi. 
Those are range. You're bringing your hands too much down. Too far down. Don't bring your hands down. We worked on that, dude. This is going to be the fifth. This is going to be the fifth. Okay, the same thing. Be intelligent. Close it up. Don't fight at his distance. Bring it in. Close it up. And you're on the inside and you're directing. Okay, Neko has a poker face. Not going to show discouragement in there. But through the first four rounds, CompuBox finds him landing six punches per round out of 45 punches per round thrown. And Nietes has more than doubled him in terms of landed punches. So while the crowd may be booing because they hoped for something more spectacular in terms of give and take, we're looking again at mastery. And we don't know how the rest of the fight is going to play out. There's a lot of fight left, but if I had to guess, I think Rebecca was thinking right now that everything I heard about Donnie Nietes is true. If I had to guess, I think the boos might be louder in round eight and nine. I, I like what, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I see two guys throwing punches. You tell me when there's a significant break in the action. Look, here comes Rebecca. His hands are moving. Nietzsche's his hands are moving. They're just also both playing defense. Right now, I'm focusing on the accuracy of Nietzsche's left hook. I, I don't see any holding. I don't see any running. I don't see any long periods of inaction. Good fight so far. Once again, Nietzsche ducks and slips a few punches and sneaks in a left hook. If you watch Nietes, even when he's under attack, he stays calm the whole time. And for the young fighters watching at home, that's something to look at. It's not always the flashy defensive move, but it's the subtleties, it's the small things, and keeping calm under composure. Excuse me, keeping composure under fire. And Nietes has done that this whole fight. Rebecca spent four years on the Argentine national team with Lucas Matisse and Marcus Maidana and acknowledged that uh, they are the kinds of fighters that Argentine fans love to watch and that he, in effect, loves to watch. We asked him if there's any chance that the long-dreamed-about fight between Maidana and Matisse could ever conceivably take place, and he smiled and said, well, for Maidana, that would have been about 100 pounds ago. So... <laughs> Unlikely it's ever going to happen. See, what the fans want here is one of these guys to just for, to lose their discipline, to just start winging shots. But it's actually a better fight than that. Both fighters are remaining disciplined, even when their opponent, particularly Nietes, is doing things to frustrate them. And it's tough to give Rebecco some type of game plan right now to get to Nietes because... One, he's the shorter fighter, so he can't box on the outside. If he comes inside and starts to open up, Nietzsche is waiting to counter. Rebecco's in a real tough spot right now in this fight. Nietzsche is hard to hit even when you're in close, in close quarters. He's still hard to land against. But that's what I mean. That's where Rebecco on paper wants to be, it's but Nietzsche is comfortable inside. Stop with the bell, guys. Stop with the bell. Well, if you accept that some of these boos might be coming from Mexican or Mexican-American fans, they're waiting to see their man Carlos Cuadras enter the ring in the next fight. And that's a perfect look at Cuadras. See the smile on his face? The personality is so vibrant. If you took his personality and put it into Canelo Alvarez, you might double the pay-per-view take on Canelo versus GGG. Let's take a look, a closer look at Carlos Cuadras' bio. He's from Mexico City. 29 years old, same age as Sri Sketso Rangbisai. 35, 2 and 1, one loss to Chocolatito and one loss to Estrada. 26 knockouts, he's got some power. Defeated Sorung Bisai in 2014. That was the last time that Sri Sketso Rangbisai lost a fight. Former 115-pound title holder, lost to Chocolatito in a very close decision. Tonight he has his fourth trainer in the past three years, and it's Triple G's trainer. Abel Sanchez. Total punches in round five. Dani Nietes landed 18 out of 79. And Juan Carlos Rebeco of Argentina landed seven out of 53. We're at the Forum in Los Angeles, looking at a couple of 112-pound fighters. The guy in the purple trunks, Dani Nietes, is a champion in the division. Oh, hard 
right left hook by Nietzsche. Follows it up with a two punch combination. One of the subtle differences you can see in these two fighters, the, the master versus the expert, you know, Nietzsche as, as the master, there's less wasted movement. Riveco, you can see, in order to establish his rhythm, is making bigger motions and and oftentimes for no direct apparent reason, Andre. Whereas Nietzsche's movement, every move seems to be for a purpose. Yeah, that's Riveco's, that's his rhythm. That's how he gets himself going. It's almost like a telegraph where he's letting you know that the attack is coming and Nietzsche being the fighter that he is, he can see that. And he'll stick a jab out, huh, slow down. He'll put a hook to the face or a jab to the stomach just to let Riveco know, I see what you're doing, and I'm not going to let you get revved up and get started. And he's been doing that all night. But Riveco's doing the right thing right now. He's going to have to sell out a little bit, be willing to get to get hit, to get his. Because if he stays back and allows Nietzsche to snake charm him, he's going to be on the end of Nietzsche's punches all night long. Right, and that's where, at a early on, I think it's it's can't say it's unfair for the crowd to boo because the crowd feels how they feel. They paid their money. They're entitled to express themselves. But eventually in this fight, if it continues this way, you're right. Rebecca, what he's doing, it's not working. It will be time to go to plan B. Which and he's been doing this round. That's he's right. had some more success. That Rebecca left hook is one of the best punches he's landed in the fight. But he had to eat five or six good punches just to get in position to throw. Well, the difficulty with plan B oftentimes is it involves some selling out, and it can hasten the fighter's demise. In order to give themselves a chance to actually win, they have to increase the odds that they get stopped or get beaten badly. Well, this is actually Rebecco's plan B. This is who he is. He's a two-fisted fighter, and he's aggressive, and he likes to throw a lot of punches. He went against his own nature, which was to lay back and try to think with, with a master thinker, and that's where he went wrong. This round, this is who Juan Carlos Rebecco really Luke is. Cut right eye. As one of the greatest of all boxing publicists, Mike Tyson said, in boxing, you gotta bring it to get it. That bell. isn't exactly what he said, but that's the <laughs> point. One of James Tony's favorite expressions, too. Up, oh, up. Oh. Rebecco got hurt with something at the end of that round. Something short. Short right hand, and I believe it was the left hook that followed. He looked out on his feet, Andre. He was out on his feet. And Nietes knows it. Rudy Hernandez, gut man, now looking in at Rebecco, trying to figure out exactly what the situation is. I'll tell you, the situation to me looks, Jim, like maybe he should not come out for this next round. Ref, ref. Ref, he hit him after the bell. After the bell, ref. He said it was before. No, no, no. It was after. Here's the replay. Here we see Nieta squat down. He's looking. Short right hand. Missed the left hook, but that right hand had Rebecco out on his feet. He's out right now. And Nieta knows it, and he's coming back after this round to try to finish the show. And now the between rounds clock has stopped. Short right hand from Nietzsche's right on the button. And now the between rounds clock is going to roll again. As the referee momentarily stopped it and now lets it roll. So hey guys, if this was the NFL, he's going into concussion protocol after 100%. that shot. 100%. Exactly right. And let's see if, see if Nietzsche's opens up and tries to finish the show. I think it's fascinating. He's going to be allowed to come back out and fight, and he got extra time between rounds to recover. He's still out on his feet, even with the extra time that he was given. He's still out. He does, his legs don't know where the canvas is. See, he doesn't, he does, his balance is shot. His that, legs are gone. That's why he's running like that, to try to get his leg. But watch the veteran. He's going to start to pick it up, and you'll see him as aggressive as he's been all night. And he landed a lead right hand flush. As he now looks for the next opportunity. Rebecco just has huge heart. But now Nietes has a sitting duck in front of him. Yeah, and I think this is highly questionable for the California Commission. As Rebecco has been allowed to come back in and fight at a moment when he was obviously compromised. Hey, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. His corner's allowing him to continue. 
His, his legs are not obeying his brand. Let's stop it, Stop everybody, it. and now somebody in the corner is waving a white flag, and intelligently so. What's the point? That would have ended ugly if they let that continue. Guys, he didn't even need that final knockdown. When you saw him come out to, to begin the round, his legs were unsteady. When he placed them on the canvas, you could see he didn't know where the floor was. If you have to stop the between rounds clock to determine whether the fighter is capable of continuing in the fight, doesn't that make the point in and of itself? Yeah. Meantime, a sensational win for yeah. Nietes. He won every round, he displayed absolute boxing mastery, and he essentially ended the fight with one right hand. Absolutely. Spectacular. He set that right hand up with a series of left hooks that were so skillful, so perfectly delivered, so well-timed, it was like a clinic on offensive boxing. And defensive boxing. Both, exactly right. And here's another look at the end. So Nietes knows that Rivecco's hurt. So now you start to see him put some power behind those punches. He commits more knowing that Rivecco's hurt. He closes the distance. He goes to the body with both hands and tries to finish up top. And Rivecco's done. He's finished. You know, Andre, we saw a good young fighter a couple months ago, Tevin Farmer, get robbed on our air. And fighters like Tevin Farmer should watch Nietes because he is the culmination of the of experience on top of the kind of talent and skill Farmer has. He is the end game. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the final details on all of this. Whoops. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 53 seconds into round number seven. The winner by knockout victory and still WBO flyweight champion of the world, Donny Ahas Nietes. Final CompuBox numbers. And uh, these numbers are a wipeout. As you can see that Nietes more than doubled Rebecca in landed punches, 100 to 40, threw 89 more punches and landed 60 more. Uh, landed at a 25% connect percentage, which isn't extraordinarily high unless you're limiting the opponent to 13%. Power punches, even wider margins, 77 out of 258 to 36 out of 195. 30% to 18%. Just an all-around clinic in a skillful and dominating performance by Donnie Nietes. We're in Los Angeles, just a few miles from downtown in the neighborhood called Inglewood. Here we have one down, two Superfly fights to go at the Forum in Los Angeles, always considered one of the best venues for boxing. Next up, it's Carlos Cuadras, who's recently been in some close and highly entertaining fights, facing Matt Williams Arroyo in what should be another good competitive fight. And then our main event, Srisaket Soren Visai, coming off two victories over Chocolatito, which included both a disputed decision and then an emphatic knockout faces Juan Francisco Estrada returning after a dramatic and thrilling victory over Carlos Cuadras but first here's a quick look at upcoming HBO sports programming Mark your calendars for these upcoming HBO shows. After Boxing Tonight, it's a replay of the January edition of Real Sports. Tuesday, it's the premiere of this month's Real Sports. Next Saturday, it's a light heavyweight doubleheader featuring Sergey Kovalev and Dmitry Bivol in separate fights. April 10 brings the premiere of the documentary Andre the Giant. My show, The Fight Game, then returns April 18. Later that month, Daniel Jacobs fights in front of a home crowd in Brooklyn, New York, followed in May by the highly anticipated mega fight rematch between Canelo and Triple G. For all this and more, go to HBO.com.